Welcome along to the SUTV Live post-game show where we're reflecting on a fabulous evening for the Blades, a 4-0 thrashing of league leaders Reading here at Bramall Lane alongside me in the studio, watching the drama unfold at Mark Duffy and Ellie Wilson. Ellie, first of all, what did you make of that performance? Yeah, I thought it was a fantastic performance from the Blades. Um, thoroughly deserved the scoreline as well. And yeah, it's something they can really kick start you know, going forward and to take that into other games because it was they just dominated throughout from minute one for me. Mark, we speak at length about this aura the Blades have built up when they're playing at home here at Bramall Lane, but that's four games to start the championship season, four wins. It's more than just something being spoken about now, it's something tangible on the pitch. Yeah, definitely, and teams will understand how difficult it is to come here and, you know, take anything away from any game, and, you know, when you see performances like that, you know, it, it will put fear into teams coming here because, you know, it was a dominant uh, display from start to finish and 4-0 is um, not flattering at all. It could have been more, to be honest. Two of the four goals came from central defender Anil Amahodic. He's clearly imperious at, at the back, but what, what do we make of him as a, a goal-scoring threat? Because he's got a knack for finding it, Ellie. Yeah, he has. He's, he's, he's shown that. And, you know, he's scored more than one goal now and... And he is a threat in and around both boxes, which is great, especially for a defender. You wouldn't necessarily expect to get on the score sheet, but if that's your job in the defensive box, then, then why can't it be you know, in the opposition box? And he's proven that he can convert it as well. So, yeah, fair play to him. He's done incredible. He's fast becoming the, the steal in the transfer market this summer, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, for the price that they paid for him, um, he seems to have all the tools, you know, he's six foot four, he's athletic, he's good on the ball, um, you know, and he's not only is a good defender, he's chipping in with goals as well, which is a real bonus for any, any team, um, to be honest, so he's a real steal, yeah. I wanted to ask you as well, Mark, about the performance from Tommy Doyle, who made his first yeah. championship start in a blade shirt tonight because he got a standing ovation when he, he got subbed off. He played a part certainly in Oliver McBurney's opener. What did you make of it? I, th I thought he was outstanding from start to finish, to be honest. Um, he was tenacious. He was aggressive. He was, you know, he showed his quality on the ball. Um, he made some really nice passes early on in the, in, in the f first half and um, he, he just fitted perfectly into the team, to be honest. So, um, it's going to be really competitive for, for the likes of McAtee and Fleck when he's back and, um, th and they're the problems that you want as a manager. Yeah, and he's only 20 years old as well. It, he's looking like a shrewd piece of business in the loan market. Yeah, it's, it's really good experience for him, like we said, mm. to be able to get these minutes and that was his opportunity to start a game and he's claimed it well, he's, you know, he's taken the chance and he's, he, you can find that you know, sometimes you might step into a team and, and not slot in too well or it takes you a little bit of time to find your feet but he's, he's winning his tackles, he's finding passes, he's composed, he's confident and you know, he's picking up first and second balls which is all you can ask from your midfield as well so he, looks, he looked really comfortable tonight I thought. Were you surprised by how comfortable he looked and how neatly he seemed to, to settle in from, from the first whistle? Yeah, I wouldn't say that his performance looked like that was his first start at all. He, he really did look confident and, you, you know, you put the groundwork in first in terms of the defensive work. That I'd say that's probably the easiest place to start and, and then the ball work comes, comes with that. But it didn't phase him at all and I thought he contributed really well in terms of his forward passes and his forward play. Um, yeah, he didn't look out of place one bit. And Mark, you always prided yourself on providing assists mm. uh, as a blade. <laughs> well, he certainly played an integral role in Ollie McBurney's goal. Yeah, definitely, and you know he, he he's, he's you know played the ball out wide, and then we've got the ball into the box early, and all he's gambled really, and got across the front man and scored, you know. So it was a fantastic goal and one that we needed, and one one that we deserved to be honest, because we started um, the game really well and possibly should have been more up by half time. On Ollie McBurney, are we seeing somebody rediscover their confidence before our eyes right now? Yeah, just with with strikers, um, as we touched on earlier. They say, you know, as long as what the team's winning and stuff, but we all know what strikers are like. They want to score goals, and Ollie's no different, you know. Um, although his whole game is about the team, and he does a lot of selfish, um, unselfish work for the team, holding it up and chasing lost causes, fighting battles, he does want to score goals as well. And as you can see with the goal against Luton, you know, the joy on his face and the relief that he would have felt from that. And then obviously he gets the, the, the goal again tonight. That's two in two for Ollie McBurney. Let's hear from the man himself and what he makes of it. Here is Ollie McBurney. 
Ollie, you wait so long for a first goal, and then they come along like London buses, but there seems to be an awful lot of joy, not only when you scored against Luton on Friday night, but certainly tonight in front of this Bramall Lane crowd. Definitely, yeah. Like you say, it's, um, as a striker, it's one of them things, you know, you can not score for a while, and then the floodgates open, so hopefully they keep coming. It was nice to get on the score sheet nice and early tonight, and then uh, I thought the boys were excellent. You know, I think the, the second goal was key in killing the game off, and then, you know, it looked fun for the boys out there. I think that were really enjoying it. Talk us through that, that opening goal because that was everything you want to see from a, a, a big number nine. You attack the near post and obviously the rest is history. Yeah, definitely. I, I noticed that the, the defenders weren't getting in very quick when it went out wide. So the, the early cross was on. Um, if Lowy could get in line, and, you know, the direct one, so I'd still be on side. I could start, you know, I could cheat and start on the opposite side of them. So uh, Lowy's put a great ball in and like you say, I'm, I'm going in at full pace, which managed to, to guide it in the near post. So it was... It was a nice feeling and a good start because we felt like they were going to sit back in and you know the longer the game was nil-nil the more the, the more it'd be hard to break them down but obviously you know going one nil up early doors makes them come out a little bit more and gives us a bit more space. You said the, the second goal was going to be crucial. I, I've got to ask you about Analama Hodic <laughs> because he's been brought for his defensive ability yet he's got an uncanny knack for finding the back of the net at the other end. Yeah he was just having me off in the, in the changing room saying he's top goal scorer I think so <laughs> it was um Nah, he's been different class since he come in. You know, obviously everyone knows how good Basham is. Mm. Bash is playing at that position, and you know to have someone come in and you know do effectively the same. It's just like the the that brothers, the way they play, and you know he's, he's been different class. And like I said, that uh, it wasn't supposed to go to win all that set piece, but I think he'll take <laughs> it all day long. So I know it's, it's good for him to get a couple of goals. He, he can finish, can't he? Scores one with his head. It, Brilliant finish with the instep of his right foot as well. Yeah, he says he's fine as long as it's in the air. He can't kick the ball off the ground, so I think he's had two headers and a volley now. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's got a good finish on it. Did anybody have a word with him when he took that shot off <laughs> of 25 yards at the end? I think the gaffer let him off for that one. Um, you know, the gaffer said it was the crowd's fault for, for getting him excited, but, you know, I don't think anyone can begrudge him that shot. It, well, absolutely not. And obviously, you're playing up there from the start alongside... Illiman and Jai as well. He gets himself another goal tonight. A, a bit like you, he seems to have really discovered his best form now. Yeah, it's a pleasure to play with. You know, I, I played the game the other day with him. I was thinking back, it's probably one of the first games that me and him have, have played together. And, you know, a lot of my friends and people in football, uh, I was speaking to about the game and they were asking if me and Illy had played a lot together because it looked kind of natural of us being up front together. And we haven't really, so that, that, that partnership's only going to get stronger the more we play together. And, you know, I really enjoy playing up there with him. He's, it's so good to watch, you know, sometimes when I see him go on one of them mazes, I just stand back and watch him because I know he's probably going to just take it past everyone and score. But uh, I'm really enjoying playing with him. And like I said, hopefully we can, we can strengthen that partnership the more we play together. Uh, I know we're only seven games into the championship season, but 12 months is, is a long time in football. And you look at where this team was 12 months ago and the tough start you had to, to last season. The job that you as a group have done in that period seems to have, have transformed this team. Definitely, we, we knew that this... The start of last season kind of killed us with, with the season, you know, we was always chasing and, you know, when the gaffer came in, you know, we were a different team and, you know, we knew if we started how we finished last season, we'd give ourselves a real good chance of being where we want to be. So that's credit to the manager and the staff that have come in and, you know, they've changed the whole mentality and the confidence you see, like I said, I said it before, but the boys look like they're having fun out there, you know, at home we feel like we can beat anyone. It was similar, it reminds me of when we were the first year in the Premier League, you know, I felt like we'd we'd kind of beat people or um, got a result before teams had already come there. You know, no one really wanted to come to Bramall Lane. And, you know, I think that feeling similar this year. And if we can keep that form going at home, then we've got a very good chance. And for you personally, obviously, you've experienced the highs during that first Premier League season with Sheffield United. You've had a tough time since, but you, you're playing as, as well as I can remember seeing in some time now. How much are you in, enjoying this period? Where does it rank in your time here? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's up there for me. You know, that, that it's more satisfying having the the lows and the and the you know the the bad form the, the injuries all them things and then coming back and you know almost proving to myself that I still still can do it you know I feel like I say I'm really enjoying playing now I feel fit I feel healthy I was a bit tired today but I think I'll, I'll be let off today but um now nah, I feel really good I feel as well mentally as well I feel it's the best that I've been in a long time and um I think that's half the battle you know if you if you're good mentally you can perform your best stuff well, we were all holding our breath when we saw you stay down for a couple of minutes, but all's good. Yeah, all good. I just got a little impact on it. It was, it was on my nerves, so it was a bit tingly, but um, yeah, it's, it's all good. I'll be fine. Rest up and go again this weekend. Yeah, exactly. You know what the championship's like, but it's better when you're winning. You know, the game's coming thick and fast. It's a lot easier to get yourself up to keep going, keep going. So enjoy it and looking forward to Sunday. 
So unsurprisingly, a very happy and satisfied Ollie McBurney. Ellie's alongside me and Mark's still here in the studio. I, I think what you saw there was a, a man who's enjoying his football, Ellie, but there's clearly an element of, of relief now that he, he's back on track. Yeah, definitely. Like we said before the game, for a striker, you want to be scoring goals, even if you're mm. assisting and performing doesn't quite cut the mark so the fact that he's, he's scored one he's clearly confident and you can see that in his game as well in his movement um, and even in, in the nature of his first goal so it's really good to see and, and hopefully he kicks on and can score some more goals because he seems to be really enjoying himself at the minute. Is there a potential here Mark for, to, for us to see a better more mature player because I mean Ollie himself referred to he's enjoying this spell now more because of the lows he's enjoyed. Yeah, I think what it does, it makes you appreciate when you are on form and you're fit, you're healthy, because, you know, when you have these knocks and you have the injuries and obviously, you know, the off-field stuff, what, what, what's happening as well, when you when you do pick up that form again and you're really starting to enjoy it and, you know, we sat here then, you could see how happy he was and smiley and everything was everything seemed perfect, do you know what I mean? Um, so it, it just makes you appreciate all those things a little bit more and, and that you know, shows on the pitch. Results clearly help. Naturally, of course, they do. But from what he was telling us as well, this whole group is buying into it's what Paul Heckingbottom is saying, what he's trying to get it, get across. They're buying into his message. Yeah, 100%. And, and again, that's really important as well. When the, the dressing room and the atmosphere off the pitch is, is spot on, then it, that's going to be reflected in the on-pitch performances. And the fact that everybody is buying into what, you know, Hecky's ethos and, and the philosophy and and they're all on the same page in that sense. It really is is shown in their in their games, and the fact they're enjoying it as well. I think that's also the first piece of the puzzle. Is you've got to have a happy changing room, people enjoying their football, and then they're going to go out and display that. So yeah, it's really key. Seven games have already gone in the season, just in the first month of August. Sheffield United on top of the league, only one defeat. Is it time to get carried away, Mark? <laughs> um, look, you know the fans will always. You know, get carried away if you're top of the league and so they should as well um, but you know obviously all the players and the staff in there will be saying look you know we just take each game as it comes and um, the championship is a very very tough league um, a long Saturday Tuesdays um, but you know wh while you're top of the league you've got to enjoy it it's been a good opening month to the season hasn't it Ellie yeah it has like I say enjoy it that's where we want to be and Everyone knows what the task in hand is, so you know, enjoy it while, it while it's here and, and hopefully it continues. A reminder, we are back on the road this weekend. Hull City away this Sunday. It's a three o'clock kickoff. SUTV Live is on air from 2 p.m. One final thought before we go from both of you. We've spoken about this impressive home form. The three games away from home in August, two draws, one defeat. That needs to improve a little, doesn't it? Um, yeah, obviously it needs to improve a little. Um, you know, if, if we can pick a few victories up on the road as well, I think we've got some games coming up that are you know winnable away. Yeah, but you know, we just got to make sure that we do the business at home, and then confidence will build, and you will go away from home. And we have so much quality and players coming back from injury. You know, strength and depth off the bench. Um, I think it's, it's going to be a good year for us. That starts with this game at Hull on Sunday, Ellie. If you can translate some of this good home form on the road, then this becomes a really formidable team. Oh, it definitely does. Hopefully you can translate all of what we saw tonight because it was a really dominant performance. Um, it was enjoyable <coughs> to watch. And, you know, from Ollie speaking there, it looked like it was enjoyable to play in as well. So that's, that's really key. And, and hopefully they can continue that because I think consistency is, is the big thing in this league. So it's great that the Blades are in the position that they are at the minute, but we need to carry that into the next game and, and the boys will know that. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Ellie, Mark, thank you both for your time this evening. 4-0 winners, Sheffield United on home soil. They've deposed the league leaders, Reading, and gone back to the Championship Summit themselves. Good night. <laughs>